the character work on the character model and have some animations for the project. I am um, so I have a little model here. Well, it's literally nothing really. It's just a Let's drag it into the scene. So this is something I've made in one of my past projects. And we will be using this for this game as I find it very easy to animate. So we'll first give it some materials. Let's just make a folder called character. And for the character, we will have a new material called body. We will have the uh, clothing. This is going to be an important one to collect, uh, to change, and then we will, I believe, have eyes like so. And now let's start. Okay, I believe there is a canvas in here. Okay, so let's open everything up and start mashing in some. Where are we? Are we? <laughs> okay, I believe that should be. Um... Let's set this to blue. Let's set the body to a color as well. Also, let's move it above the, um, the light. Slightly small, actually. So let's scale it to one. What's this board here? It's a player selector. Let's call this a canvas. So this will come in handy as well, as we know. I really don't like how the light is in this project for some reason. It will definitely have to go. So let's change the body color to something. <laughs> okay, like this. Where are the eyes? Let's make the eyes green for now. Everything is so hard to see. Okay, the clothing will be attached to here, here, and in the lower section here. Yeah. And that will be our character. But first, let's just do something to this light. I really don't like how the light in this scene works. So let's go into Window, Rendering, Light Settings. And just play it around a little bit with the lights. See what it looks like here. Okay, let's click the camera. I've never had the light look so weird before. Okay. Move to the side a little bit. I wonder if, uh, if I were to make a new scene, if it would look like this as well. Are all the scenes like this? Yeah, they're all like this. Okay, well, it does look better now with the, um, the added intensity of the light. Maybe not so much. Oh, I see soft shadows adds a little bit of that blur. this. Let's go back to the light settings. Where are we? No. I think that should be okay for now. Yeah, it looks better. Uh, it's color, more colorful. I think, if anything, I would say there's too much um, shadows on the character himself. So I was thinking of just completely removing all the shadows from the materials that I just attached. So let's go into the character materials, select all of them, and actually let's remove uh, the shadows. Might look actually a little bit off than it did. Have a look. No, nah, it's, yeah, let's leave it as that. I actually don't mind it like this. Let's go back into the game scene, just rotate him around a little bit. Yeah, I 
think we are okay with that. Okay, so now that we have the model set up, let's uh, submit this in here. Um, let's go into our other scene, which has our, actually let's save this, the nav mesh test. And let's track any of the character controllers into the prefabs as well. We'll use that later to set them up uh, appropriately. Now, let's go back to that level. And what we're going to do now is we'll try to create the animations. So let's go into the animator. And what we'll need to have is three sets of animations that we want. So let's create an animator for this. And let's call this the unit animation. Ideally, we would like to have a new folder called animations. Let's put it. Is it, is it not in assets? There we go. Like this. And first thing we're going to do is we will create our idle animations for this prefab. So let's actually go into the private, I mean, into the prefab creators so we can see everything better. Now, oh, actually. So these things can go away because these are leftovers from the other game. Like this, like this. This can go away as well. This can go away. What does that look like? Oh, it's missing. There's nothing there. Okay. So it's good like this. Now that we have this, let's do the animations. So this is what we look like by default, but actually create animation. So first, wait, we already have an animation for this. What? What are the animations for logo? Okay, this is weird. So it's as, as if it didn't save. Anyway, let's save this, open it. And now that we have this, let's create a new clip and let's call this the idle. So for the idle animation, what we need to do is, first we need to make the hands go down by default. So they're going to be at minus 90. So this is how the animation starts. Then we can hit record. And for the idle, let's just slightly above the head to the side. Wait, is it a minus 90? So it has to stay at minus 90. And then let's click on the head. Let's just give it a little turn. So he kind of looks to one side, which is about 20 degrees angle on here. And then, so that's 15, it will go back to neutral, 45. And then we'll go back to, two, no, 20 on the other side, so minus 20. And at one full minute, we go back to the fold like this, we are not going to move our arms at all. And that's going to be our entire animation segment. So you kind of just move, move the head to the side so he's looking. So that's our idle gone. Now let's create a new clip. And next is going to be our movement. Or I guess let's just call it walk, walking animation. Weird, because now we have two animation folders for some reason. This is so weird. OK, let's finish doing the animation first. So for our walking animation, we will press play. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to, well, we're going to start like this. And then halfway through, we're going to move this hand to about here. 
And the other hand, the opposite way. Where are we? So we'll go here. And then at one minute mark, we will reset the hands to minus 90 again. And then we will at one minute 30, we will move them in the opposite direction. So wait, let me just see what we look like at this. So this hand is forward. So now at 130, we want to move it backward. And to the other hand, we want to do the opposite like this. And then of course that means that at two, we want to do both at minus 90. Like so. And now if we just go back, undo the recording, we now see that if we walk, we are just moving our hands up and down, up and down, up and down, like so. And finally, let's create one more animation. And this is going to be called holding, carrying. So for the carrying animation, we will move both hands to about zero. Wait, let's actually press play. Both will be set to zero, zero. There we go, like this. I'm just gonna, that's it for this one. So all that this one has is just a little holding the hands like this, because uh, as we are carrying the object. So now let's fix this big mess with, for some reason, Show me an explorer. This is so weird. Like uh, it's only showing me one folder in the project, but there's actually two. Yeah. Okay, now I'm just gonna drag all of these animations into here. And now let's set them up in our so this is kind of what we have. So when the project starts, we load in this animation. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a transition straight to idle. Or in fact, we don't even need this. This can go away. This will be our set as default layer. This can be deleted. This is nothing, so this can go away. So you have our idle. And then in our idle, we can either make a transition to here or we can make it here. So all we're going to do is we're just going to make this like spiral where everything connects to everything because we only have three animations. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way for anything larger, but something as short as this, it just makes no reason not to. So there you go. So we have this little triangle like so. And now what we're going to do is in parameters, we are going to add a new of type integer. So we're going to call this the action type like this. And so idle is our first one. So that's going to be our zero. So anything that's going to point towards our idle is going to be equal to uh, a zero, like so. And then walking will be our action at one, because that's the very first thing that we can do besides idling. We're just going to change it to one. And then finally, carrying is just going to be a number two. So that's our second action that we can perform, like so. So let's click on all of them, see if they're assigned. Yes, they are. Um, I'm going to also remove all of the um, transitions between each of them. We will not care about that. Everything disabled for the sake of this. We don't need anything at all. Nothing. For this project, there is it's unnecessary to have any of that. We just want to straight away switch between these animations, and that's it. So let's double check that everything's set. Everything is set. Perfect. So now we have our animations set up. And now if we press play, what's going to happen is our um, character constantly bobs with the idol, because that's what they will always do. They, by default, they will always play. Um, the default animation and that can be found here so we have a loop time which makes the animation loop which is exactly what we want we always want the animation to keep looping um, through because we made it this way and now with this let's 
add our character controller into the game. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to copy every single component that he had and drag it over here. Not to make a mistake, so let's just copy this component and paste component as new. We might have to slightly adjust it. I actually see that there is already some components attached. So let's open this up for now. Actually, let's remove the capsule collider for now. Let's open the prefab and just make sure that there is no extra collision anywhere. I don't understand what this is, so I'm just going to delete it. Oh, so there was a capsule collider on the head, which we don't need, so that's fine. But there it also shows me this, which I believe is for the selection canvas. Right? So for the selection canvas, we want to, of course, have the selector. Where are we? I'm just set it to green. I still don't understand why it says that there is a collision. Oh, there was a box collider around. There we go. So with this, we now have just an empty old model. Let's, let's override the changes. Now let's add a capsule collider. Maybe not. What's on the other one? Yeah. So what else do we need? We need uh, the nav mesh, so let's copy that. And first paste this into here, which is about right. And then we need a our character controller. We, well, character, what did we call it? The agent controller and selected interactable. So agent controller, selected interactable. Now for selected interactable, we want to click on the canvas, attach it here. Um, we need to have selectable layer attached and no, wait, what? And change the tag to unit. So tag's going to be unit and it's going to be selectable layer. Nope, only this one. And let's just do capsule. No, should we do capsule or uh, cylinder? What are the collisions that I can have? Yeah, let's just go with the capsule. And now let's just quickly click this in 2D and modify it so the collision is proper. There we go. And now we have ourselves the collision set for this character. Uh, we no longer need this guy here. Now with this done, let's just, I need to recap on the programming here because I haven't looked at it in a while. Oh, we also need to set up this area here as a uh, walkable area so we can test this uh, level out. And after this, we can set up the character movement. Let's close this. Let's quickly go here, set this as, Navigation static. Wait, we actually only want to have the floor. Yep. So set this as navigation static, only this object. And then we want to go into navigation and we just want to bake the area like so. There we go. So we have a baked walkable area on one of the platforms. Let's have a look at the code. So our flag, how do we get the flag? So we need a game manager script. So let's create an empty game object, reset it, drag in a game manager script across. Game manager, call it a game manager. Like so. Now let's look for the flag in our prefabs and let's add 
drag in our unit to the active players list. And now we should be able to move him around or not. Let's drag in our default guy real quick. And see if everything's fine. Where are we? Okay, controllable character. Are they both on the layer? Let's actually confirm this. If this doesn't work, I'll just move this into the other prefab to save time. Uh, what do we have here? Where is our game manager? Can I select this guy? I can't select anyone. Am I missing scripts? Of course I'm missing scripts. I'm definitely missing scripts. Um, let's go into our testing script. And what do we have that's missing? Game manager. So player input controller is also missing. OK. OK, so selectable is going to be selectable. And pathing is going to be walkable layer. So I believe I need to attach the platform to be a walkable layer only for this object. There we go. And let's give this a go. There we go. So now our character walks around a bit like the other one. The animations are not triggering though right now, which makes 100% sense. What I also want to do real quick is set the hands to be at zero by default. When we first create our character, there we go. And now we are ready to add some code to our controller to be able to use the animation. So first thing we're going to do is we will reference our animator. So private animator anim reference to the animation script flag that gets displayed when we click on a travel location. Check whenever we have a destination or not. There we go, like this, like this. And next thing we're going to add is we will add actually another handy script real quick. So we are going to add a public. Actually, let's make it private. So we're going to add a private enum and we're going to call it the animation sequences. Now, for our animation sequences, we will have the idle, we will have the walking, and we will have carrying. And then we will do private animation sequences, uh, anim se sequence. There we go, like so. Now, here in start, we will get a reference to our animation. So we'll do, do this dot, get component animator, like so. And now that we have this, we can set up the animation. So wait, let's do first initializers. Instantiators. Pathing. And then animation at the bottom. We can maybe separate them into functions later on. So first thing we're going to do is we will set our animation sequence and animation sequence dot is equal to idle. So that's going to be our default animation. And now if we go to anim dot enabled, we're going to set it to true. And we'll do anim.set integer. And our value, it will always be the animation sequence dot like this. So it will be basically whatever is that, which is the idle for the start. Now we need to figure out what the name was of our little animator thing. 
So if you go into animations, click on the unit, action type it's called. So we want to call the name action type in here, like so. And this will trigger to the correct animation, which is of course idle right now. So we essentially didn't do anything, but, but we did. Um, now that we have this, now we know that if we're moving, um, we need to change our animation. So every time we cast move agent, we will simply do like this in here. And we will, before we do this, we will do this in here and we'll change this to walking. So we want to set our character to walking. Actually, I'm going to paste this in here and then can move things, move things around later. So now, now that we have this and then here, this is where we change the animation sequence to idle, which is fine. So we have walking idle. So when we stop, we don't move anymore. Okay, so let's just give this a try. We select the character. Oh. Some issues with the box. Oh, uh, ah. I see why. Is it fine? Oh, yeah, now it's good. So as we see now, we wobble the hands around. And when we get to the position, we start wobbling the head around. So we can see that, but I actually would like to make this animation slightly better. So first thing I'm just going to do is open up the prefab. No, no, no. Yeah. And I'm going to go into the animator again. I'll select the walking animation. and. I'll hit the record button back on. And when we get to this point, I just want to whack the hands a little bit more. So this hand, I just want it to go all the way like this. For this hand, I want to make it go all the way like this. And then if we move into this position, where are we? So then we go back. So out, in, and then out again. So slightly more. Slightly more like so. I'm gonna undo the record and now let's give this another try in here. And now, as we see, it's way more visible when they're walking. So, there we go. That's how we got the animation to work. Do the hands reset? That's the real question. Now, one thing I don't like is how the shadow is being cast. So, I'll actually just I'm just going to remove the shadows entirely, for now at least. Okay, with this done, we have actually successfully implemented character with animation. They ought to already automatically rotate, as that's something we did do in the last part. There we go. And I believe that's good enough for now. So in the next part, we will add the ability to pick things up or actually let's do triggers first so first we will add triggers actually and then after we do triggers we will add the ability to pick things up but yeah this is it for uh, this little section yeah i'm going to keep these to half an hour instead of an hour then that, that way, oh, I'll I'll keep it to one mechanic. If I do the mechanic, I'll do it however long it takes, but it'll be limited to up to an hour and minimum of half an hour. Uh, so what do we have here? Um, determines the type of the animation with visual. Determines type of the animation. There we go. There you go. Thanks for watching. That's it for today.